welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, we will talk about the silicon controlled rectifier, SCR or thyristor, and its behavior on alternating current. This is the thyristor symbol, anode, cathode, and gate. The way in which it works is simple. You connect the cathode to the negative of your battery or power supply. In the anode, you can put a load, for example, a lamp, and then connect to positive. But the current will not flow through the circuit until you turn on the thyristor. And you do this by applying a small voltage to the gate. You do this through a resistor to limit the current that flows through the gate, otherwise you can burn the thyristor and you can put a switch here. When you close the switch, the voltage in the gate turns on the thyristor and now it conducts the current, so the current will flow through your load and turn on the lamp. Once the thyristor is on, you can disconnect the gate but the current will continue to flow. The only way to stop it is to disconnect the battery or to apply a negative voltage to the gate. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, Upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. Let's see. In this type restore we have cathode, anode and gate. So we connect the negative of the power supply to the cathode, then the anode The anode is connected to the load, which is this small lamp. And the other side of the lamp to the positive of the power supply. You can see that the lamp is not turned on. Now we take a resistor and apply a voltage from positive to the gate. And now the lamp is on and note that the gate is not connected to positive in order to turn off the lamp we have to disconnect the power and the lamp goes off let's see again in order to understand the behavior of the thyristor in AC, I will use this circuit. It is similar to the previous one, but here we are using an AC source, a transformer for example. Again, we use a resistor to apply a voltage to the gate, but we also have a potentiometer. Later we will explain why we need the potentiometer. And here is our load between the cathode and the source. It can also go in this part. It works in both ways. The first thing we need to notice is that for the thyristor to work, to conduct current, it will be correctly polarized. It must be positive at the anode and negative at the cathode. Therefore, in this circuit, the thyristor will conduct the current only during the positive part of the AC cycle. Here's the circuit. Let's see it in action and then we will explain how it works. You can see that by moving the potentiometer we can vary the intensity of light 
of the little lamp. Now let's see how the circuit works. Notice that there are three voltages here. One is the output of the transformer, which is a sinusoidal wave. Another is the voltage that goes to the gate of the thyristor, which is the same sinusoidal wave as that of the transformer, but with a lower amplitude due to the resistors. And the third is the output of the thyristor that goes to or load. This plot is the voltage output of the transformer. It is a sinusoidal wave. Here we have the voltage at the gate. It is also a sinusoidal wave, but of smaller amplitude because of the resistor and potentiometer that we connected. And here we will draw the output of the thyristor. Remember that the thyristor must be properly, must have the correct polarity. So it will only fire during the positive cycle when the gate has a positive voltage. So in principle, the output of the thyristor will be half wave. It will fire here, here it will not fire and then here it will fire again. But it is not that simple because the gate needs a minimum voltage in order to turn on the thyristor. Suppose that that minimum voltage is this. Therefore, during this part of the cycle, the thyristor is off. It will only conduct at this point. So the output is zero and then it starts to conduct. This will be the waveform of the thyristor. We lose one part of the positive cycle. And now if we turn our potentiometer and increase the resistance, then this wave will have less amplitude. It will go something like this. Okay, and notice that the time needed for the gate to have the necessary voltage is now larger. So the thyristor output will now start here. And we can continue to increase the resistance up to the point where we are here. The maximum of the voltage gate is equal to the voltage needed to turn on the thyristor and at that point the thyristor will not fire. Let's see this more clearly in the oscilloscope. Okay, I'm going to connect the transformer. Here we can see the output of the thyristor. We are measuring at the terminals of the lamp. The resistance is at a minimum and now if we increase the resistance by moving the potentiometer we can see how the output is modified. Minimum resistance, the half cycle is almost complete. We increase the resistance and we can see how we lose part of the semi-cycle. And if we continue to increase, we can reach the point where we have only half of the semi-cycle. Beyond that point, the thyristor will not conduct electricity. And of course, this has an effect on the power. You can see how the intensity of the light is less.
Ok, there it is. The behavior of the thyristor in alternating current. I hope you liked the video. If you want to help me, please visit my Patreon page. Thanks and see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.